Happy Monday, everybody. I'm back from vacation, and we are going to do some ballasting on the layout. Alrighty, I was able to pick up some, some supplies this weekend, and uh, I wanted to make sure that I got my mix right on my, uh, on my ballast here, so I went ahead and did the top and kind of underneath the... Uh, um, the bridge here is going to be kind of finicky anyway, so I went ahead and did this a couple days ago, gave it some time to dry just to make sure everything's set up nice and my technique still worked the way I thought it did. So, uh, so far so good. We are going to uh, get both of these done today and that'll probably be about all we have time for. Um, while I had some time, I went ahead and put up my sideboards. Uh, we'll see... There's that one over there, that one over there, and then I got my permanent location figured out for both of my, my scenes here, so I can just clip my phone in when I'm ready to do my reviews and whatnot, so that's cool. Um, yeah, that's really all the other stuff I got done, so let's go ahead and just zoom in and get started ballasting that rear track there. Okay, so a few things that I use for uh, ballasting. Uh, this is Cato Unitrack, and I find that I have to ballast it a little bit differently than I would, you know, normal uh, Code 80, Code 55, like Atlas Track or what have you. Because this is kind of an easy track type situation, the roadbed is already in place and it already has a pretty aggressive edge built onto it so what I have found is I have better luck putting down glue full strength glue on it first applying a very thin layer then doing the roadbed wash the uh, and I'll get to that in a second and then applying a little more ballast on top of that to get the proper look in my opinion for the roadbed when you when you look at Cato Unitrack, you'll see that the ties are already buried pretty deep in the plastic. So there's not a whole lot of room to work with ballast on top of it and on the side of it. So I have tried ballasting the center areas and it ends up just filling up too much. You get derailments because gravel gets up in the wheels and stuff like that. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave this empty and just do the sides for my review layout. Most of my angles are low angle anyway, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, a couple things we'll need. I like to use Q-tips to apply the glue once I get it in place. We will need some full strength Elmers and an empty bottle that I do. Uh, I fill it up. Uh, Roughly this full with water, I add about another eighth inch or so of rubbing alcohol. Uh, some people use a dropper to apply. I don't in this particular case, and I'll get to that when we start laying the road bed. And then uh, the remaining area, I go ahead and fill up with glue. And I do the glue last because I found if you just leave you know, a portion of it at the bottom, and you add the water to it, it's difficult to get it all mixed in. So I generally try to mix it in slowly so I get a good, uh, you know, good breakdown of the glue into the water. It's all in solution. So this, this comes out a little more clean that way. It ends up being about a five to one uh, glue to water ratio. And then you just add as much alcohol as you need. I have found it's a little bit different depending on the... Uh, the ballast size you're using, in this case, I'm using nothing but fine. And honestly, the alcohol will evaporate off. So if you get too much of it in there, it's really not that big of a deal. Some people use soap in place of the alcohol to help break up the surface tension. I have just found that I like using alcohol better. So the first thing I do is I just apply a bead of full strength glue along the area in which I want to cover with ballast. You don't have to be 
terribly perfect with this. And then I just come in and kind of spread it out along the area. Okay, just like that. From that point, go ahead and get a, however you want to, uh, you know, distribute your ballast. I like to just put it in the cup that comes with the, uh, with the, the tub, and I just lightly sprinkle it along the edge of the road bed. Don't worry about spilling any anywhere. Once you have this glued in and it's sat for a couple days, we're going to come in and vacuum the grassy areas, get any of the, the gravel out of there we don't want. And then when it comes time to do the, the final put together, we will uh, add a little bit more turf in places where we think it's sparse and thin. The reason why I do the... Uh, the full strength glue on the base layer is to give the ballast something to stick to when I start to layer it up. The this relatively steep angle that there is on the Cato Unitrack, I, I tend to find as soon as I add the alcohol and then the, the glue wash, it kind of tends to roll off of the edge and you have to come in and do cleanup anyway. So this is where you go ahead and add your ten or your five to one glue. And I just run it across the top layer here. And because there's plenty of alcohol in this, it will actually break the surface tension as you go. And it will run down and kind of level itself out on the edge there. This is where you get to come in and add some more ballast. Build up the road bed so it's nice and even. You could use a spoon to do this if you wanted. I just found that pinching little bits gives me a little more control. I'm a little bit shaky, so. Okay. I then always just take a moment, run my finger across the tracks. It just helps get anything off of the top that I won't have to clean up later. So, And just like that, it goes pretty quick. It's a pretty simple process. We'll go ahead and do, oops, wrong one. The front of the... Get the key tip out here. Should get a relatively smooth layer. If it ends up being kind of blotchy and you're not liking the way that the glue here looks you can just go ahead and let it set for a minute and the you know the glue will naturally kind of level itself out flow a little better we'll go ahead and do that anyway Okay, we'll let the back side go ahead and level off and we'll just go ahead and start laying ballast. I 
I would imagine if you're more talented than me, you could get this all in one go and you wouldn't have to do this, but this is kind of my personal foolproof method. Even if you don't know what you're doing, it kind of seems to give you a decent result. And I definitely don't know what I'm doing, so. There are some people that have been doing this for 30, 40 years, and it's just second nature to them. I am not that person, so. Okay, there's that. Maybe we'll go ahead and do the back while we're at it. We'll start down here. You can hear the wind picking up in the background. We must have some winter weather incoming. Can't tell you how excited that makes me. All right, go ahead and give our five to one a good shake again. And we'll lay down some more glue. Give that a second to go ahead and just permeate. And I'll start back here. Uh, I want to say Woodland Scenics makes a little tiny vacuum for cleaning this stuff up when you're done. I would not recommend grabbing the Dust Buster and getting this done. Um, I had one a while ago. It honestly kind of fell apart on me pretty quick. What I ended up getting that I really like and maybe I'll show in my next video is I bought a, a Harbor Freight just hand vac thing. Runs on one of their Bauer battery systems. It is just perfect for this type of thing it doesn't have enough suction to rip up any glued down uh, ballast or anything like that but it will definitely pick up any of the gravel that isn't and any of the uh, oh uh, the um, lost the word for it turf there we go that's the word the turf that isn't glued down as well now i got a couple of high spots here you can if you just lightly touch your ballast, you can get it to lay a little bit flatter. And then if you get anything up by the rails, you'll want to get that away if you can. Alrighty, we'll go ahead and run across the top here. Go. And right there, we made a little bit of a lip, so we will just lightly come in and tap that smooth. And right there as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do the back side now. I unfortunately will not be able to have a good image of this done on this episode. We'll have to wait till the next one to take a look at it. This, I have found, at least when it is winter in Montana, you need to go ahead and let all of your ballast dry for a couple days before it is good and attached. We uh, Definitely the cold tends to slow it down from, from my experience. So, let's zoom in and take a look at this. You'll notice something. You will sometimes get a little bit of a lip. Like right there, you can see that there is a slight little lip. 
the glue will slowly settle, but if that's still there, we're going to come in and we are going to uh, use our turf to kind of fill that in and have a nice seamless edge between the gravel and the turf because, you know, in real life, it'll kind of grow up into it a little bit. So that'll probably be next episode. We'll go ahead and get that finished up and then we'll start working on our background. But you will see... I'll go ahead and do the backside of this on my own time, but we have a lot of gravel laying out in the middle of nowhere. Like I said, not a big deal. So anyway, that is how I do ballasting on my Unitrack. Now I generally do it the old fashioned way when we are using regular Atlas track where you lay gravel between the ties and whatnot, but I just have had terrible luck with and reliability doing it that way with my, with my Cato Unitrack. So this is how I do it. If anybody was curious, look at it as a kind of a how-to. I just, I've always had decent luck getting it done this way. So, all right. I think uh, that's all we'll do for this episode. And next, hopefully we will get the background done and we'll finish up laying down turf. And maybe one more, we'll, we'll do some cleanup back here in kind of the back area so we get a decent background image when we're doing reviews. So probably two more of these and we will be done and off to uh, a different uh, video series. So thanks for stopping by everybody. I'll see you this Wednesday for Empty Wallet Wednesday and uh, yeah, have a good week. Bye now.